Hale. And now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Proudly We Hail. I feel you're really going to enjoy our program, for we have a story that's not only intriguing, suspenseful, and thrilling, but especially timely. Let's go to the movies at your United Theaters. See two thrillers on one big show at the Aurora and Midway Drive-Ins, Wednesday through Sunday. It's Sisters, plus the reincarnation of Peter Proud, an obsessive search for a prior existence. Rated R, no one under 17 admitted without parents. Drive-ins open at 6.45. Shows begin at 7.15. See Brother Can You Spare a Dime at the Varsity Theater, a nostalgic look at the 1930s. Starting Friday at the Varsity Theater, see Peter Sellers in Return of the Pink Panther. Also, Woody Allen and Diane Keaton in Love and Death, rated PG. If you're near Tacoma, see Fist of Fury plus Chinese Connection at the 112th Street Drive-In. It's a favorite for all Kung Fu fans. And consult the P.I. for showtime and listings. These days, in all major cities of the world, the newspaper headlines are thick and black. In their color and size alone, there is an urgency, a warning. In the stories under the headlines, one can detect and feel a current which has caught mankind in its flow. One can feel himself being swept along in it powerless to battle against the ever-increasing tide. But could you tear away those headlines? Could you look behind the underlying stories? You would come upon a world of darkness out of which they grow. It is a world that exists under the surface of all cities. It's strung across like a tightrope where picked men of both sides balance precariously. One false step, and a man tumbles into the abyss from which there is no return. To make the odds even greater, there is no adequate light in this under-the-surface world, and a man who dares to trespass its narrow boundaries never quite knows who is friend or enemy. An alleyway at night in the section of a city still bearing the tortured imprint of a war five years past. The rain pours down on this desolation of broken, crumbling walls, of jagged beams and yawning pits, which all bear silent and terrible testimony to the hell that passed this way. Enter this alleyway, and you call upon danger. Is that you, Victor? Victor. If it wasn't, Carl, you'd have a bullet in you long ago. Oh. Victor, you had me frightened. No, you had me frightened. I wonder how anyone can play the game you're playing and live so long. Game? Why, Victor, I... I could hear you coming a mile away. Suppose I hadn't been Victor. Suppose I'd been somebody else. It's too unpleasant at night for you to be unpleasant. I can't think of anyone who'd pick a meeting place like this but you. Let's just say you can't think, Carl. Let it go at that. If you're going to be disagreeable, I'll go do business elsewhere. You would, too, wouldn't you? But of course. But of course. <laughs> You're a realist, aren't you, Carl? Look, my friend, I did not come out on this miserable night to discuss philosophy amidst the ruins. All right, let's get to the point. Do you have the money? Do you have the goods? I'll have you know it was a very difficult job and worth far more than the price I asked. If they detect any changes, I'll be very surprised. If they detect any changes, I'll be very dead. <laughs> and so will you. What do you mean? Oh, I'll tell them who did my work <laughs> before I go. You wouldn't do that. But of course. <laughs> I don't think I like doing business with you. Oh, you're wonderful, Carl. You're wonderful. Come on. Let's see what you got. 
Here's the money. You'll excuse me while I count it. Count it later. I don't have much time. Let's have the stuff. All right, but you can't very well look at it here. I'm not going to, old man. Thank you. I know you wouldn't trick me. You like living too well. I don't think it's enough. I do. Take it or leave it. You leave me no choice. That's right. Now, you leave the way you came. I'll go another way. I have an appointment with Nikolai the Great, who sits in a dingy little room playing solitaire by candlelight while he waits for me to show up. Good night, Carl. Ah, you people, you're always so sure. Always. That's our job. What about the last set of armament figures he gave us? False, Nikolai. Completely false. And the production sheet? Also false. <laughs> and to think we trusted him, Krovak. Very disillusioning to me. Oh, you will make me weak. Well, it's good that you uncovered it. It's certain you never would have Nikolai. Well, that's not my job. So, Victor is a spy, but not for us. Too bad. Such a clever young man. Hey, we'll see what his cleverness will buy him now. Not very punctual. A bad night. You make excuses for him, Nikolai. <laughs> no, I state facts. Your trouble, Krovak, is that you don't know how to relax. I don't have time for relaxing. You should find time. It would do you good. Black nine on the red ten. Sometimes I... I wonder about you. Good. It's a sign of progress. What do you plan to do with Victor? I have a little party all arranged for him. I've heard of your parties. Can't you just shoot him and be done with it? You stick to your business and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> you know what you are, Krovak? Oh, you tell me. Why on the sick? You're a sadist. The fact that Victor has turned out to be a traitor is not important to you. But the fact that you've been able to find out he is one gives you the greatest delight, for it means one more poor devil you can torture. I would be careful what I said. <laughs> you think you frighten me? We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> ah. ah, he says. Now, there's a sound of great meaning. Ah, very good. I know a man named Krovac. And I know some things about him, things he would not like anyone to know, especially his superiors. They're things that might cause him a great deal of embarrassment were they known. One concerns a large sum of money. Krovac received this money from a man who wished to buy his way out of the country. The man got a bullet in his head, and Krovac kept the money. I know other things, too. And I know if a man like Krovac realized this, he might try to put a bullet in my head, so I've taken steps. If anything should happen to me, what I know about Krovac will become public knowledge. Now I think you'd better sit down and calm yourself. You don't frighten me. Nor is it my intention. I merely wish to caution you. To make you realize that bullying can sometimes be dangerous. Be quiet. I think I hear him now. Come in. Close the door, Victor. Lock it. Who's your friend, Nikolai? A friend. Would you like to meet him? Oh, I'd like to meet your friend. Why does he stand over there in the dark? I think he's shy. <laughs> Krovac, are you shy? Don't waste time. Krovac, hmm? Hmm. Where have I heard that name? Not from anyone respectable, I'm sure. How have you been? Busy. Good. No late? Weather. I thought as much. Terrible night. Mm, what does he want? They requested him to be here. No likes to sit with my back to anyone. You're very polite, Victor. Perfect, gentlemen. Suppose we get down to business. Krovac is an impatient man. He doesn't know how to relax. Pity. Well, Victor. What have you for us tonight? I have some papers. Very interesting papers. Also have some microfilm. Very interesting microfilm. You are a very interesting fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Ah. Where did you get these? I found them. 
I like figures. These are good figures. See if you don't agree, Krovac, huh? Victor, there's only one trouble with what you've just given us. Trouble? Nikolai? I'm afraid so, Victor. Mm, what would that be? They are not good figures for us. Why not? He's a good actor, you must admit that, huh? You're a very good actor. Thank you. Now, what are you getting at? What's the matter with those figures? They are figures that do not exist. I suggest you keep your hands where we can see them. Nicolai, you old bear. Stop the double talk. What's the matter with you? Don't you like me anymore? Oh, I like you immensely, Victor. You're a fine young fellow. But I do not like your figures. Why? Because I know they're false. What makes you think that? Kovacs. He makes me think it. He has some figures about you. They're not very good ones as far as we're concerned, but unlike yours, they're the truth. Where did he get them? I own them. <laughs> He's not so good an actor as you, Victor. Suppose I tell you a little story. Suppose. Oh, stop wasting time. Suppose you be still. I will tell you a story about Krovac's figures. There was a young man who in the war was an English fighter pilot. One day he was shot down over France. He managed to parachute from his plane and land safely. Somehow, he found his way to the underground. The, uh, Maquis, they're called, huh? He joined them and ranked high in their organization when France was liberated. Next, our adventurous young man became a British espionage agent in Germany. Because he was a cool and brilliant young man, a good actor, too, he survived. And when the war was over, he returned to England. Now, you would think that he would have had enough excitement for one lifetime, but no. We find he dropped completely out of sight, went to live in France. To all purposes, became a Frenchman. A little over a year ago, we made contact with a man named Victor. To all purposes, a Frenchman. No. Nikolai, you're an old windbag. <laughs> you, Victor, and what are you? Ah, not a windbag. No. You are Victor, an Englishman. To all purposes, a Frenchman. Will it do any good to tell you that that's a lot of rot? You are very convincing. But I don't believe you. It would be impossible to believe you now. I'm sorry, Nicola. You have plenty of reason to be when I'm through with you. Before you make a very serious mistake, why don't you take the time to check my latest fact? You wouldn't be playing for time, would you? We've wasted enough already. I'm sick of this talk. Look, why don't one of you go and have the microfilm developed? That will certainly... It's no good, Victor. We know conclusively. Well... In that case... <laughs> Too old for this kind of thing. You certainly are. It was you who let him get to that window. Of course, with the table on top of me. And what were you doing, my friend? If you'd let me handle it the way I wanted, this never would have happened. Oh, stop your roaring. How was I to know he could fly out the window and not break his fool neck? Why don't you light the candle? I've seen enough of your silly face for one night. I'll go find this victor. My way. <laughs> Listening to Proudly We Hail, starring Lee Tracy. It's a good song. Tonight is kind of special to be here for. Must be something more so now. So the night is gone. Let it be known. If anybody deserves the best you can give, Wisconsin.
And now for the second act of A Party for Krovac with our star, Lee Tracy. We've got to make a plan. All right, let's make a plan. You come and sit beside me so we can plan together. We've made a lot of plans together, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Some pretty good ones, too. But never the kind that most people try to make. Like what? Oh, like a man and a woman make house on a hill. Maybe... Maybe overlooking the water, like sitting together in some place beside the cellar of a bombed-out building, like planning a, a picnic instead of an escape. House on a hill. I've had that dream, too. Oh, Victor, I love you. I love you, Maria. There's hardly been time till now to tell you. I, I know, my darling. But now there's time. A little. Come put your arms around me. We'll plan a picnic for tomorrow. Just you and I. Time where we're going. Now, have you got it all straight? Yes. I- I'm to go down the alley to the street and walk west to Sander Road. You'll go another way. We'll, we'll meet there at 10.15. I'll follow you till you find a car with keys in it. You'll get in, leave the door open, and I'll get in. I know it's slim, but it's better than the station or the airport. Maybe if I pray hard enough, we'll make it. We'll give it that old school try. I'll see you at Sander Road, 10.15. Don't be late. Late for a picnic? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Already, darling. Keep your fingers crossed. Don't think anyone noticed us. Oh. Hold tight. They're after us. Oh. He's down. Oh. That car pulling out of the south street. Picture, if you will, a four high ceiling cell from which a very bright light shines down into the bandaged face of a man who lies on a rude cot. He is bound, hand and foot, completely helpless. His name is Victor. I want you to know when I wish to leave. Until that time, I don't want to be disturbed under any circumstance. Understand? Look, I'll leave us and close the door. Mm. You would like a cigarette? I'm sorry about the face. You went through the windshield. If it's any solace, it was Krovac's car you hit. He's a bit banged up, too. Dark glasses go well with him. Maria, is she all right? Yes, for the time being, you have adjoining cells. Take a cigarette, will you? My hands are occupied. Seems a pity a young man like you should see fit to cut himself off from... What are you after? An Englishman. Before it was considered decadent... I used to read your William Shakespeare. I still remember a bit. This royal throne of kings, this scepted isle, this earth of majesty, this happy breed of men, 
this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, this blessed plot of earth, this realm, this thing. Who the devil are you? Oh, I could quote you more than that, Victor. So much more. So you wonder why I came to see you, huh? I want to impress upon you what a fool you are. I wanted to do this before Krovac comes and has his little party with you. We put our trust in you, and you betrayed us. Now you pay the penalty. Roll over with your back to me. Just you wait till Krovac gets his hand on you. Roll over quickly. Have you heard what happens at one of Krovac's parties? Keep your hands and feet just the way they are. I've cut the ropes. One tug and you're free. The pistol in your hands on the hair trigger. Now roll over so you're facing me. What is that you say? <laughs> A little late for that, my friend. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Why are you doing this? There isn't much time. Don't ask questions. Krovac will be here soon. The guard will lock it in with you. Krovac likes to do his own torture. You've got to get rid of Krovac. Your own chances are pretty slim after that. I don't like doing it, but since it's come to this, it seems the only way. At least you can know that with Krovac gone, I'll be able to carry on without suspicion. What about the gun? Don't they suspect you? No, the guard is bribed. He won't dare open his mouth. The guard changes in just a few minutes, so I've got to get out of here. All these months, I never knew. Never suspect. Good. You weren't supposed to. Let's hope they don't. Ah, you're wasting your breath and my time. We know all that. I bid you good riddance, fool. Goodbye, Victor. Sorry, I can't help you more. I'll do what I can for the girl. Pray for a quick death, Victor. Ha! Very funny. I'm a very funny fellow. <laughs> Until then, leave us alone, my friend and me. When I'm gone, you can finish the job any way you please. Well, well, what have we here? I'd hardly recognize you, your face all hidden with bandages. Well, also, where have you come? You know, 15 minutes from now, I guarantee you won't even recognize yourself. Dark glasses haven't improved your look. Shut up! Oh. Usually my little parties last longer. You will forgive me for having to hurry, but in 20 minutes I must catch the night train for Paris. Well, bet you'd like to be going to Paris. Hey, Victor. Hey. Who is here? Who gave you cigarettes? Oh, never mind. I can guess. And in a few minutes you'll tell me gladly. You'll beg to tell me. Uh, you know, one way to take the bandages off your face would be to burn them off. No, oh, but that would be a little too quick. I have a bag of tricks here. Party tricks. And now to, to business. I assure you, you won't like this a bit. Not one little bit. Nor will you. <laughs> How do you like this, Krovac? Body's on the other foot. Why, Krovac? I'd hardly recognize you. Your face all hidden in bandages. <laughs> Have I tied the ropes tight enough? Good. Now, let's put out the light. There. Now, your dark glasses and your hat pulled down. So, coat collar like this. Perhaps I have become Krovac and you have become Victor. We'll play it like that for now, and Sleep well, you miserable. Ah, what a weakling. Night but begun. Sure, the light's gone. Oh, how observing of you. <laughs> the light went out when the party got rough. <laughs> Very good. You're half past the hour, so the car's here to take you to the airport. I know that, fool. He's fainted. Wait till he recovers before you finish. I wouldn't want to 
Oh, in his last minute. Yes, sir. Girl in, uh, girl in this cell. She goes with me. Goes with you, but, sir, I... Don't but, sir, me. Bring her out. If I miss that plane, I'll have your hide. Yes, sir. Well, isn't she charming? Victor. Where is Victor? Victor's in good hands. I've come to take you to a picnic. What? What do you mean? A picnic? A picnic near a house on a hill. We don't have much time. Bring her along. He's delirious. <laughs> he doesn't even look like Crow. He doesn't look like anybody. You know, life. Get the bandages from my head and you'll see who I am. I know who you are. I'm Krovac. I'm Krovac. Well, this Krovac is quite a man. When he gets through with them, they think they're him. No. There's only room for one Krovac in this world, and you're not the one. Oh, for the love of God, please. Ah, now I know he's not Krovac. Krovac says God's a capitalist. No, miss. <laughs> no, no, it's right. a trick. I've been trapped. I'm Krovac. The poor man's mad. Shall we put him out of his misery? No, please, no. I don't. I'm Krovac. I'm a Krovac, I tell you. Good night, Krovac. Tell me I'm not dreaming. Mm, I don't think so, darling. But I won't be so sure myself till we reach Paris. Poor thing. It'll heal. Actually, it helped us fool him. How did you ever manage it? I still don't understand. Darling, we never would have. It hadn't been for a friend. Friend? Who? I don't really know the answer to that. I only know that he was one. We owe him our lives. Perhaps we should say a prayer. Or Nikolai. Man who stayed behind. Thank you, Lee Tracy, for a thrilling performance. Your story of the party for Krovac was indeed timely and most entertaining. Well, Ken, I think stories like this help all of us to realize what a wonderful privilege it is to be free men and really make us appreciate what we've got here in America. Right you are, Lee. And in times like these, it behooves every American citizen to be a full American citizen. Proudly, we hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy in the cast were Miriam Wolfe, Joe DeSantis, Bill Lipton, and Jack Jason. A Party for Krovac was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarneri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. We hope you'll be with us next week for Proudly We Hail. We have another program that I'm sure you will enjoy. It's entitled The Story of Johnny Appleseed, and it's a story of a real American. Goodbye. <laughs>